subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. From water vapor around Jupiter's moon to where the dinosaur killing asteroid came from 66 million years ago. These are some of the stories we talk about on this episode of Scientifix. This is Mohana Basu and every week on the Print Scientifix, I take you through some of the top science stories of the week from across the globe. This week, scientists have for the first time discovered a fossilized brain from a 310 million year old horseshoe crab. The fossilized brain belongs to an extinct species called Euprobstene. It was discovered at Maison Creek in Illinois, where the conditions were just right to perfectly preserve the animal's delicate soft tissue. Currently, there are four species of horseshoe crabs alive, all of which have hard exoskeletons, 10 legs and a U-shaped head. The species is closely related to scorpions and spiders. While horseshoe crab fossils are relatively common, nothing was previously known about their ancient brains. This is because soft tissues that make up brains decay very quickly. Special geological conditions are needed for them to be preserved. In this case, as the brain rotted away, it was replaced by a clay mineral called kaolinite, which created a cast of the brain. The researchers found that despite 300 million years of evolution, the ancient brain is similar to that of modern horseshoe crabs. For the first time, astronomers have uncovered evidence of water vapor in the atmosphere of Jupiter's moon Ganymede. This water vapor forms when ice from the moon's surface sublimates, that is, turns from solid to gas. The findings were made using new and archival data sets from NASA's Hubble Space Telescope. Previous research has offered circumstantial evidence that Ganymede, the largest moon in the solar system, contains more water than all of Earth's oceans. However, temperatures there are so cold that water on the surface is frozen solid. However, since Ganymede's ocean would reside roughly 100 miles below the crust, the water vapor discovered by Hubble is unlikely to represent the evaporation of this ocean. Ganymede's surface temperature varies strongly throughout the day and around noon near the equator, it may become sufficiently warm that the ice surface releases some small amounts of water molecules. This finding adds anticipation to the European Space Agency's upcoming mission, JUICE, which stands for Jupiter Icy Moon Explorer, Planned for launch in 2022 and arrival at Jupiter in 2029, it will spend at least three years making detailed observations of Jupiter and three of its largest moons with particular emphasis on Ganymede as the planetary body and a potential habitat. Meanwhile, Russia's Nauka module, which was launched last week, briefly knocked the International Space Station out of its position after its rockets accidentally fired after docking. This forced personnel aboard the ISS to fire thrusters on the Russian segment of the station to counter the effect. The module moved the station 45 degrees out of its position. However, NASA tweeted that the recovery operations have regained attitude and the crew is in no danger. Russia's Roscosmos Space Agency attributed the issue to Nauka's engines having to work with residual fuel in the craft. It will now take several months and multiple spacewalks to fully integrate the module with the space station. In another first, scientists have managed to create metallic water on Earth, a feat that was so far thought to only be possible in conditions present in the core of large planets such as Jupiter. While our everyday tap water, which contains salt, can conduct electricity, pure distilled water acts as an almost perfect insulator. To turn water into an electric conductor like metals, Water would have to be pressurized to such an extent that the orbitals of the outer electrons of its molecules overlap. 
This pressure is only present in the core of large planets such as Jupiter. Now, scientists have used a different approach to make this metallic water. Using metals like sodium and potassium which easily release their outer electron, researchers made a water droplet acquire the properties of a metal. They put a tiny bit of water on a drop of sodium-potassium alloy which is liquid at room temperature. The thin layer of gold-colored metallic water was created for a few seconds, enough for the researchers to image it and prove that it was in a metallic state. Meanwhile, scientists have found that the asteroid that is believed to have wiped out the dinosaurs and other life forms from Earth some 66 million years ago likely came from the outer half of the main asteroid belt. This is unusual because this region was previously thought to produce few impactors. Researchers from the Southwest Research Institute have shown that the processes that deliver large asteroids to Earth from that region occur at least 10 times more frequently than previously thought and the composition of these bodies match what we know of the dinosaur killing impactor. Over 66 million years ago, a body estimated to be 6 miles across hit in what is now Mexico and formed the Chicxulub crater which is over 90 miles across. This massive blast triggered a mass extinction event that ended the reign of the dinosaurs. To probe the impact, geologists have previously examined 66 million year old rock samples found on land and within drill cores. The results indicate that the impactor was similar to the carbonaceous chondrite class of meteoroids, some of the most pristine materials in the solar system. While carbonaceous chondrites are among the many mile-wide bodies that approach the Earth, none today are close to the sizes needed to produce an impact with any kind of reasonable probability. The team found that six mile-wide asteroids hit the Earth once every 250 million years on average, a time scale that yields reasonable odds that the Chicxulub crater occurred 66 million years ago. Moreover, nearly half of impacts were from carbonaceous chondrites, a good match with what is known about the Chicxulub impactor. This is Mohana Basu, Special Correspondent at The Print. If you like our videos, do consider joining The Print's YouTube membership for special access to membership perks such as early access to our key reports as well as exclusive community content on the YouTube channel. You can do so through the link in the description box below.